Welcome back to Big Bob's MTG. Thank you for joining me today on another box opening. So today we have our Ikoria Layer of Behemoths pre-release kits, as well as four booster packs to open. There will be lots more to come, so I just wanted to uh, start off with this guy. Talk about the set a little bit. Now you have noticed that I have had a hiatus from recording any videos, and that's because Magic Arena has really been kind of ticking me off. Uh, there are some days that I go days without winning, and there are some days that I go all day with nothing but wins, but it's driving me crazy, so I have uh, refrained from making any videos about it. Now this is the Ikoria Red Spin Down Die. Got a perfect 20, can't argue with that. So, anyone want the code? Here you go. That is the code for you to enjoy. Feel free. Got a little divider here. Flying Indestructible, Death Touch, uh, Vigilance and Indestructible tokens. Little punch card. It's kind of cool. And Mythos of Nethroy. That's a good card. Destroy target non-land permanent if it's a creature card. Or if you pay one forest, one planes. With this spell, you can cast a spell with anything. So cool. Okay, so the first pack. Okay, so I have been playing Ikoria for quite a while now, but we'll go over these cards if anybody hasn't been watching my arena videos. Uh, startling development makes your creature's power and toughness equal 4-4 four, four until end of turn, and a blue serpent at the same time. So if you can't see that, it's a st it's an eagle going, what the heck happened? <laughs> it's a giant serpent. Cycling for one, uh, frenzied raptor. It's a 4-2 native creature. Nothing else special about it. Uh, checkpoint officer. You can tap a creature. Thieving otter. Bush meat poacher. Sacrifice another creature and pay one colorless tap. You gain life equal to that creature's toughness. That's not bad. And you draw a card. And you draw a card. So that's great. All right. Ram through. This is for those trample tribal type decks. Yes, uh, those skills and abilities are now tribal, so people get special things when they have it. Uh, target creature you control deals damage equal to its power to target creature you don't control. If the creature you control has trample, excess damage is dealt to the creature's controller instead. Pretty slick. It works pretty well. Especially if you have like a 7-2 creature and you're going to deal damage to a 3-1 a or a 1-1 a, a one -one creature. You can just ram right through and deal 6 damage to the player. Uh, Savai Sabretooth, a 3-1 native cat. Anticipate, we all know that card. Cloud Piercer, mutate for 4. When it mutates, you may discard a card. If you do, draw a card. Pretty good. Sprite Dragon, one of the better cards in this set. Uh, Flying Haste, 1-1 one, for 2. Uh, this is, is it. So, Flying Haste, whenever you cast a non-creature spell, put a plus one, plus one counter on Sprite Dragon. That works with counter spells, that works with auras, that works with uh, burn damage or sorceries and instants. So, it's very useful. Uh, Reconnaissance Mission. Whenever a creature you control deals combat damage to a player, you may draw a card. Not too bad. Cycling for two colorless. Ooh! Boneyard Lurker Alt Art. Love that look. That's cool. Pay four. Uh, for, or pay its mutate cost for four as well. Whenever this creature mutates, return target permanent card from your graveyard to your hand. Pretty slick. And Karuga, the Macro Sage. Great card. This is a, one of the first companion cards that I have pulled. And it states uh, your starting deck contains only cards with a converted amount of cost of three or greater and land cards. When Karuga Mac the Macro Sage enters the battlefield, draw a card for each other permanent you control with converted mana cost 3 or greater. 
that works pretty well, especially with these adventure cards from my core, from, uh, not a Coria, um, Throne of Eldraine. I've seen it used a lot with that type of deck, especially with Fires of Invention. Cast things for free, bounce it out of, bounce Fires out of play, throw this guy into play and draw a ton of cards. Awesome card. And we have Kogla, Ape Titan, as our foil rare. Now, Kogla is actually one of the better uh, rares in the set. It has uh, three colorless, three forests. Uh, when Kogla, the Titan Ape, enters the battlefield, it fights up to one target creature you don't control. Uh, when it attacks, destroy target artifact or enchantment in defending player controls. And uh, you can pay two and return target human you control to its owner's hand. Kogla gains indestructible until end of turn. Absolutely phenomenal card. So there's that first one, and we got more punch cards, so that's good. And a land. Let's get our uh, uncommons on here. I'm actually going to pull that out because I'm going to keep collecting those. Pack two! Alright, we have the Garrison Cat, where when it dies, it makes a 1-1 one, one white human soldier token. Uh, phase Dolphin, whenever it attacks, another target attacking creature can't be blocked this turn. Great card to kind of, uh, kind of, you know, sneak somebody else through. Cathartic Reunion! There's a cute little guy cuddling the dinosaur elemental thing, whatever it is. As an additional cost to cast this spell, discard two cards. Draw three cards. Great card. All right. Two cost divine arrow deals four damage to target attacking or blocking creature. I'm glad they are bringing some of these back. Uh, it was one of the things back in the day when magic was first coming around that did really help the game. I felt it was a much more even uh, deal damage type of spell. Uh, than a lot of the new stuff now that is like wipe the board, blow the board out, uh, eliminate target opponent. <laughs> uh, Humble Naturalist. You can, he's a 1-3 creature for 2 mana. Add 1 mana of any color. Spend this mana only to cast creature spell. Pretty decent. Bushmeat Poacher again. Anticipate once again. Blazing Volume. Glad they brought another 1 cost. Deal 1 damage to all your opponent's stuff uh, card. Really good card. Four mana, the Day Squad Marshal. When he enters the battlefield, create a 1-1 one, one white human soldier creature token. Uh, Farfinder, he is a creature fox, but he is colorless. Uh, costs three colorless. And uh, he has Vigilance, 1-1 one, one creature. When he enters the battlefield, you may search your library for a basic land card. Reveal it and put it into your hand. Then shuffle your library great card to mutate as well as uh, this is a great card for ramp in any other non-green deck or white now actually with uh, Birth of Melitus from Theros Beyond Death uh, Wingspan Mentor 3 mana uh, he's a 1-3 creature when he enters the battlefield put a flying counter on target non-human creature you control pay 2 colorless and 1 play or, I'm sorry 1 island Tap, put a plus one, plus one counter on each creature you control with flying. Pretty righteous, especially if they're all just native flyers. Uh, this one also goes really well with uh, the Luminous Moth. Back for more. Return target creature card from your graveyard to the battlefield. When you do, it fights up to one target creature you don't control. Great card. Really great card. Frill Scare Mentor. So, the Frill Scare Mentor, when it enters the battlefield, put a menace counter on target non-human creature you control. And then you can do the same thing as the Wingspan Mentor and put plus one, count plus one, plus one counter on each creature with menace. Super cool. All right, so this is our first ultimatum that came out. They did make five of these uh, for the different color sets with the Triomes that they also released. So this one is uh, target player gains five life. Inspired ultimatum deals five damage to target to any target, and then you draw five cards. Just an absolutely righteous card. All right, and the Bloodfeld Caves. All right, I'm gonna move this 
over here, and then, and then our companion guy. This is uh, one of our tokens for displaying our our uh, companion outside the game. So the mechanic of companion has seemed to be very difficult for a lot of people, including myself, to really like inside the game. It, it produces too much power with the uh, added ability of always having a card at your disposal no matter what, and nobody can do anything about it. Uh, Capture Sphere, uh, this is kind of like, uh, oh, the Frost Links. Comes into play, taps a creature, doesn't attack during its tap step, but it's an aura, so it stays that way. Alright, a 5-5 five, five for 6, haste with cycling for 2 colorless. Uh, 4 cost, exile target creature with power 4 or greater. You can see that the Wanderer is on there. The Wanderer's cutting the head off of that. I wonder why the Wanderer didn't come back in this set. Maybe it was possible and they just decided against it. Who knows? Mutual Destruction. This spell has flash as long as you control a permanent with flash. In a flash deck, highly possible. Even uh, Omen of the Dead. As an additional cost to this spell, sacrifice creature. Destroy target creature. Fully grown. Three cost. Target creature gets plus three, plus three until end of turn. Put a trample counter on it. Now I like this because it gives you the ability to get the plus three, plus three, and put a trample counter on it, which the trample counter remains. So those counters can be accumulated, proliferated, uh, divided, moved, whatever you want to do. Uh, Rumbling Rock Slide. Rumbling Rock Slide deals damage to target creature equal to the number of lands you control. Great card. This is a great card. Now, I was skeptical about this card being very useful, but in red and white decks with that one guy that um, deals damage to the player equal to the number to the amount of damage that it took, it's it's an amazing card. Convolute, three costs, counter target spell, unless this controller pays four. Uh, Mysterious Egg, whenever this creature mutates, put a plus one, plus one counter on it. Great card. Uh, the alternate art to this is Mothra's Egg. So that's pretty fun. Corpse Churn, put the top three cards of your library into your graveyard. Then you may return a creature card from your graveyard to your hand. For two mana, that's not so bad. And doesn't have to be of those three cards, so I enjoy that. That's good. Flycatcher Giraffid. <laughs> Giraffid, huh? Enters the battlefield with your choice of a Vigilance or Reach counter. Uh, Titanoth Rex. Trample. Cycling for two. When it is cycled, you may put a trample counter on target creature you control. It's an 11 11 for, for uh, nine mana. Wow. Super cool. Alright, Insatiable Hemophage. Mutate for three Death Touch. Whenever you this creature mutates, each opponent loses X life and you gain X life, where X is the number of times this creature mutated. That's interesting. Now, I'm, I'm curious if you gain X life per opponent like let's say you're in a big giant um you're in a big giant commander game and you throw this and mutate something would this count for gaining x life per opponent or is it just gain x life so it could deal six damage to the other three players who are playing a four player game and then on top of that you just gain six life as well interesting want to see how that goes uh so Stormwind Caprador. Now this is a card that I have built a deck around. It's a bird goat. It's a 1-3 creature for 3 mana with flying. If non-combat damage will be dealt to Stormwind Caprador, prevent that damage. Put a plus one plus one counter on it for each one damage prevented this way. Remember that uh, the rumble... Oh, what was it called? Uh, we'll find it here in just a second. Rumbling Rock Slide. Deals, one, deals damage equal to the number of uh, lands you control. Yeah, deal it to this guy. It would prevent all that damage, and he'd get a plus one, plus one counter for every single damage prevented that way. Have six lands in play, deal six damage to him. It's prevented. He's now a 7-9. <laughs> awesome. Guy Ruda, Doom of the Depths, one of the most broken commanders that I have ever gotten my hands on. 
He is a companion, so he starts out in your sideboard if you'd like to. Uh, your starting deck contains only cards with even converted mana costs. So, when he enters the battlefield, each player puts the top four cards of their library into the graveyard. Then, you can put a creature card from, with an even converted mana cost from among those cards onto the battlefield under your control. Absolutely stupidly broken card. I have seen this used and abused more ways than I can possibly name inside of Arena. It's, it's just ridiculous. Great card, but still super broken. Uh, the Human Soldier token. Alright, we're going to continue on here. Snare Tactician. Whenever you cycle card, tap target creature and opponent controls. Of one mind, this spell costs two colorless less to cast if you control a human creature and a non-human creature. Draw two cards. So one mana if you control both a human and a non-human. Lava Serpent. Ram through again. Blitz Leech. Uh, Pataiga Tiger. When Pataiga Tiger enters the battlefield, target human you control gets plus two plus two until end of turn. Not too bad. For five mana though, it's a bit steep for a three-four flying. Target creature gets plus one plus zero until end of turn. Put a first strike counter on it. This is actually a pretty good card for one mana. I like it. It's good. Uh, sleeper Dart. When it enters the battlefield, draw a card. You can tap and sacrifice Sleeper Dart. Target creature doesn't untap during its controller's untap step. Not so bad. Convolute once again. Unexpected Fangs. You never do expect those fangs, do you? Especially for most of them girls out there. Put a puzzle counter and lifelink counter on target creature for two mana. Pretty decent card. Keen Sight Mentor is the same thing, but this time with Vigilance. Uh, put a puzzle and puzzle counter on each creature you control with Vigilance. So the Vigilance Tribal has a buff there. Easy prey. Destroy target creature with converted mana cost. Two or less. Cycling for two for two mana. Zengoth Crystal. Uh, it can tap for a, a swamp, forest, or island. Cycling for two colorless. Pay three to put it in play. Crystalline Giant. This is one of the ones that I actually do enjoy playing with. It's a three three for three. And at the beginning of your combat turn, you get you get to choose a kind of counter at random that Crystalline Giant doesn't have on it from among Flying, First Strike, Death Touch, Hexproof, Lifelink, Menace, Reach, Trample, Vigilance, and Plus One Plus One Counter. Put a counter of that kind on Crystalline Giant. Pretty cool. Uh, Beast Token. So we got an Elk, Tiger, Dinosaur, Stegosaurus, I don't know what else. All right, so you guys are going to have to tell me in the comments down below how this new microphone is working. I did get a new one, so I just want to see how it sounds. Of the mind, or of one mind, that's what I should say. Uh, Dreneth Stinger, uh, whenever you cycle card, it deals one damage to each opponent. You can cycle him for one as well. All right, this is a six cost, three six with vigilance and cycling one dinosaur pretty good for the cycling costs or if you need just something to stand up and you know get in the way of things this guy would do a good job dark bargain look at the top three cards of your library put two of them into your hand and the other into your graveyard dark bargain deals two damage to you survivors bond choose one or both you may return a human creature card or a non-human creature card from your graveyard to your hand or do both and then you have both Night Squad Commando. When Night Squad Commando enters the battlefield, if you attack this turn, create a 1-1 one, one white human soldier creature token. Not too bad. 2-3 two, three for 3 cost. There's our Flycatcher again. Light of Hope. Choose 1. Gain 4 life. Destroy an enchantment. Or put a plus one plus one counter on target creature. Rumbling Rock Slide once again. Aegis Turtle. 0-5 for 1. A fight as 1. Now this starts off the, the choose one or both. Now you could put a possum possum counter or put. Ah. You can either give a human 
or a non-human, or a human and non-human creature, plus one plus one, and they gain indestructible at the end of turn. Pretty slick card. Rooting Moloch. Uh, when he enters the battlefield, exile target card with cycling ability from your graveyard. Until end of turn, until the end of your next turn, you may play that card. So it gives you a little bit of time to play it. Now you cannot play the cycling cost for it. You can play the card, not the cycling cost. Cycling cost is an ability which you are unable to play outside of the game. Lifelink, cycling for two. When you cycle it, put a lifelink counter on target creature. It's a 3-3 three, three for three with lifelink. Not too bad. And Wynota, another one of the most broken cards in this set. Now, her ability, she's a four cost, four, four creature, uh, war human warrior token. Whenever a non-human creature you control attacks, look at the top six cards of your library. You, you may put a human creature card from among them onto the battlefield tapped and attacking. It gains indestructible. Put the rest of the cards on the bottom of your library in a random order. So that really mixes things up, especially with the Agent of Treachery that are around. It's just absolutely ridiculous. Oh, that's garbage. So. Okay. Last pack to crack in this pre-release kit. Main Servo. Glimmer Bell. Now, Main Servo is just a 1-4 of Vigilance. Glimmer Bell flying, 1-3 for 2. You can pay 2 to untap it. I still have yet to use this card to its full potential. I'm sure there's a way to get it to, um, I don't know, tap for mana and then untap and tap for mana and untap and over and over and over again, but I haven't figured it out yet. Maybe you guys have some suggestions. A cathartic reunion again. Garrison Cat. Wilt, destroy target artifact or enchantment for two. Cycling for two colorless, not too bad. Bushmeat Poacher. Ah, Dreamtail Heron. This is one of the better mutate cards out there. Mutate for four instead of paying the five for a three four. Flying, whenever this creature mutates, draw a card. Uh, coordinated Charge. Creatures you control with get plus two plus one until end of turn. Cycling for two. Awesome. Ah, we got an alternate art Cloud Piercer. So, if you remember the Cloud Piercer, whenever this creature mutates, you may discard a card if you do draw a card. Not too bad. Put that here with our alternate arts there. Uh, Farfinder, that's good. Skull Prophet. Two cost. Um, forest and a Swamp. Tap to add a Forest or a Swamp. Or tap to put the top two cards of your library into your graveyard. Would really help if you're looking for something specific and you can pull it out of the graveyard. Huntmaster Liger. Alright, so this is a four cost or you can mutate it for three. Uh, whenever this creature mutates, other creatures you control get plus X plus X until end of turn. Where X is the number of times this creature has mutated. Duskfang Mentor. Once again, uh, Plus one, plus one counter on each creature you control with lifelink. Not too bad. And Lurus. Another one of the companions that is just grossly overpowered. So he starts out in your sideboard. Each permanent you, each permanent card in your starting deck has converted mana cost two or less. So that includes things like Cruel Celebrant and um, the Cat. Let's see what else is there. A lot of the green cards that are 1-1 one, one, that if you play another card with uh, uh, more power than you have, uh, it gets bigger. Uh, there's a beetle that grows if you have a creature that has four uh, power or more every combat. Yeah, just so, so many things. So, during each of your turns, you may cast one permanent spell with converted mana cost two or less from your graveyard. Wow, it's just ridiculously broken. And our human soldier token. All right, now that we're done with that, we're gonna crack open two of these stray uh, booster packs over here to the side, and then we're gonna get to our next pack.
Gust of Wind. Uh, costs two colorless less to cast if you control a creature with flying. Return target non-land permanent you don't control to its owner's hand. Ferocious Tigerilla. Four cost when he enters the battlefield with your choice of trample counter or a menace counter. Checkpoint Officer, two cost again. Uh, Frost Veil Ambush, cycling for one, or you can pay five and tap up to two target creatures. Those creatures don't untap during their controls and tap step. Wilt again, Lurking Deadeye. Uh, Vulpakeet, here we go. So it's a Vulpix and a, key, a Parakeet, I'm guessing. But uh, Vulpix is a Pokemon, so that's not going to happen. Uh, mutate for three, flying. Uh, whenever this creature mutates, get a plus one, plus one counter on it. Pretty great. Uh, Migratory Great Horn. This is one of the other good mutate cards out there. Four cost, or you can pay three, three, four creature. Whenever this creature mutates, search your library for a basic land card. Put it onto the battlefield tapped. Then shuffle your library. Pretty friggin' great. All right, and a Nightmare Pangolin. One five creature for three mana. It's just a native 1-5 with no other abilities. Ah, the Dreamtail Heron alternate art. Mutate for 4 whenever it, uh, this creature mutates. Draw a card. Pretty cool. Neutralize. Counter target spell for 3 or you can cycle it for 2 colorless. Uh, Trumpeting Gnar. Another one of the really great mutate cards. You can either pay 3 to put it into play or mutate it for five which is a little bit steep but i think they're meant to put into play for three and then mutate on top of it and there's lots of things to do that whenever this creature mutates put a three three green beast creature token into play pretty sweet uh, kitria crystal forest island or mountain cycling for two and we got our first triome, the Zengoth tri Zagoth triome. Pretty great. I like these triomes a lot. They really help kind of spread your mana base out. Okay, keep going here. Helica Glider enters the battlefield with your choice of a flying or first strike counter. Frost Links, they brought it back from M20. So it's back. That's the new art for that. Survivor's Bond. Choose one or both. Uh, thwart the enemy. Prevent all damage that be dealt to you. Dealt this turn by creatures your opponents control. Pretty awesome. Uh, Pataiga Tiger. Shredded Sails. You can choose one. Destroy an artifact. Do four damage target creature with flying. Or you can cycle it just for two colorless. Hampering Snare. Creatures your opponent can control get plus, I'm sorry, minus two, minus zero, until end of turn, cycling for two colorless. Evolving Wilds has returned. Put that guy there. Uh, Blood Curdle, destroy target creature. Put a menace counter on a creature you control. That's pretty slick. Neutralize. Uh, another Sprite Dragon, that's pretty good. And a Parcel Beast. So the Parcel Beast itself only has to mutate for two. You can pay four for a 2-4 creature. And he basically has the ability of the Risen Reef. You have to pay one, colorless though, tap him and look at the top card of your library. If it's a land card, you may put that card onto the battlefield. If you don't put that card onto the battlefield, put it into your hand. So it's exactly what the Risen Reef does with the added bonus of you being able to activate it any time. Dranith Magistrate. Uh, your opponents can't cast spells from anywhere other than their hands. So that really helps against uh, Luris, where you can cast from your graveyard. As well as, um, well, Garuda and Winota don't count as casting, they count as playing. But escape cards do count for Dranith. All right, Monstrous Step Foil. Got this guy there and a kitty cat token. Great! Next up, the next pre release kit. Now, I'm sorry, I'm not going to be able to give away the code for this pre release kit. I actually do want one for myself. 
So, um, I don't know. Sue me or whatever. I don't care. All right, let's see here. Six. Oh, that sucks. Okay. So, toss that away. What's our foil here? Mythos of Snapdex. So, we got two Mythos here. Gotta get that out of your view so you don't steal my code. Got our tokens here. Our uh, dividers. And six booster packs. So, let's just go from top to bottom here. Now, I'm going to kind of graze over stuff, especially if we've already covered it. Ferocious Tigerilla. Uh, Parameter Sergeant. Phase Dolphin. Mutual Destruction. Humble Naturalist. Night Squad Commando. Flycatcher Gref. Light of Hope. Rumbling Rock Slide. Aegis Turtle. And here is a new one that we actually have. So this is a Footfall Crater. You cycle it for one, or pay one, and enchant a land. Target creature gains trample and haste until end of turn. Could think of a number of things for that. Skull Prophet. Zengoth Crystal. We have another one of those. And Iluna. Apex of Wishes. You can either pay five, which is two colorless, one forest, island, and one mountain. Or you can pay six, which is three colorless, one mountain or forest, and two islands. Flying Trample, whenever this creature mutates, exile cards from the top of your library until you exile a non-land permanent. Put that card onto the battlefield. Or into your hand. Pretty freaking great. Alright, so we got our uh, Human Soldier token. Let's keep going, let's keep going. Okay, Blade Granite Banish. Keep safe. Forbidden friendship. This is actually one of the cards that works well if you need a non-human and a human uh, in play. Cre create a 1-1 one, one red dinosaur creature token with haste and 1-1 one, one, one white human soldier creature token. So you create both at the same time. Pretty useful. Two tokens for the price of one. The blood curdle, okay. Toss it down there. Swallow hole has an additional has an additional cost to cast this spell. Tap an untapped creature you control. Exile target tapped creature. Put a plus one plus one counter on the creature tapped to pay this spell's mana cost. Pretty cool. Ruining Moloch. Ivy Elemental has returned. Ivy Elemental enters the battlefield with an X one one counters on it. And another Crystalline Giant. So that's pretty slick. Alright, and there is the Narset of the Ancient Way emblem. Now, uh, whenever you cast a non-creature spell, this emblem deals two damage to any target. Hopefully we can get an Narset, because that is a freaking great card. One of the best Planeswalkers that I've seen. Uh, seriously, it, it's... It made me love Narset again, after the absolute debacle that her Parting of the Veils had done. Uh, forbidden Friendship, uh, Solid Footing, Frost Links, Unlikely Aid, Bristling Boar, Raking Claws, Evolving Wilds, Memory Leak, Essence Shatter, uh, Greater Sandworm, uh, Mystic Subduel, Subduel, Auspicious Star Trek, Starix. This card is one of the better cards out there. Now, when it comes down to making those historic, or what, what do they call it? Um, artisan. Artisan is what they call it. So it's popper with uncommons in it. This card comes in handy. It's what I went through my tournament with when they had the Friday Night Magic be um, artisan. I used this card almost exclusively. All right, sorry about that. I had to uh, jump away to get a drink of water real quick because my throat was drying out to death. So we got our uh, three cost Necropanther. This you can either pay three for three three to put him into play or mutate him. And his mutate ability is whenever this creature mutates, return target creature card 
with converted monocost three or less from your graveyard to the battlefield pretty awesome card and uh G gigantha gigantha the wellspring this is another companion card uh no card in your starting deck has more than one of the same mana symbol in its mana cost just an awesome awesome card this card works out wonderfully if you're going to go with a lower cost or a lower mana based cost uh, deck um, so you can tap him add a plains island swamp mountain and forest this mana can't be used to pay generic mana costs so all the things that cost those uh, multicolored things like uh let's see here the parcel beast you can use the forest and the island for him uh but it cannot be used for the generic monocost which it means the colorless portion of it all cool card really fun that's trash here we go we're gonna keep going here all right uh premier sergeant thieving otter uh, Spell Eater Wolverine, Garrison Cat, Unlikely Aid, Bristling Boar, Lurking Deadeye, Honey Mammoth, Dreamtail Heron, Coordinated Charge, uh, Primal Empathy. I've seen this card used quite a few times. It is a great card. At the beginning of your upkeep, draw a card if you control a creature with the greatest power among creatures on the battlefield. Otherwise, put a plus one plus one counter on a creature you control. That can get out of hand real quick. Bastion of a Remembrance. So when it enters the battlefield, you put a 1-1 uh, a one, one white human soldier creature token on, onto the battlefield. Whenever a creature you control dies, each opponent loses one life, and you gain one life. Now that sounds very familiar to Cruel Celebrant. Now, I've actually made a deck around this and Cruel Celebrant and Lurus, uh, our Lurus guy down here, uh, because you can keep returning all this stuff back and ba back and forth and back and forth. Now, he wasn't my companion, but he was part of the deck. So I had like three of them in my main deck. Survive the Thunder Mane. Whenever you cycle a card, you may pay two colorless if you do he deals two damage to target creature and you gain two life slither wisp flash three two creature for three two swamps one island uh, whenever you cast another spell that has flash you draw a card and each opponent loses one life pretty great card i have used this card in a flash tribal type of deck it does work pretty well Human Soldier, another Human Soldier, different card style. Seems like there's a lot of them. Now, he kind of looks like Renji from Bleach. All right, Frost Veil Ambush. Uh, Spell Eater Wolverine, Helica Glider, Frost Lanes, Dead Weight, Sudden Spinnerets, Sudden Spinnerets. Yeah, Sudden Spinnerets. Uh, one cost, target creature gets plus one, plus three, end a turn put a reach counter on it untap it Ooh, that's pretty good uh cavern whisperer uh mutate uh creature whenever this creature mutates each opponent discards card not too bad the almighty brushwag i love this card and I, I have yet to make a deck around it i want to so bad so he's a one one creature for one with trample and you can pay four and he gets a plus three, plus three, until in turn. Can't really argue with that. Uh, Crustacean, Fire Prophecy, Valiant Rescuer, uh, Sonorous Howlbonder, Barrier Breach, and Kahira, the Orphan Guard, another companion. So each creature card in your starting deck is a cat. Elemental, Nightmare, Dinosaur, or Beast card. It has Vigilance, 3-2 creature for 3. Each other creature you control, that's a cat, element, Nightmare, Dinosaur, or Beast, gets plus 1, plus 1, and has Vigilance. Pretty slick card. 
That is awesome. All right, down to the final three. Let's hope that we get some more good stuff. Really hoping for a Narset. Really hoping for a, a, a Luka. We're just going to squish through all of these. I get to the Will of the All Hunter. Ooh, Pouncing Shore Shark. That is a cool alt art. Ooh, I like that. And Mythos of Vardok. So that goes with the other two promo mythos. Uh, mythos that we have. Here we go. Final two packs. These are the uh, other packs that we got. Now I did buy these two boxes as well as uh, two actual boxes from World of Games 2.0 down in Lakeville. I would highly recommend checking them out once this uh, Corona time is all done with. Uh, Jubilant Skybonder, Dire Tactics, and the Archipelago. All right, so this is a mutate card, seven cost. Uh, whenever this creature mutates, tap up to X target creatures, where X is the number of times this creature has mutated. I've actually won with this card because uh, I had him mutating over and over and over again, and I mutated this guy on top of another guy that was already mutated three or four times, tapped everybody down, and swung in for huge damage. If anything, you would tap in, you would swing in for at least seven with that turn. Uh, the good thing about Mutate is, everything underneath this card, if it has flying, death touch, lifelink, etc., 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 all coordinates and uh, consolidates onto this card as well. All right, we got another Mythos of Vardok. <laughs> now, that's not unheard of. Because these are not packs that were actually inside the, boost, the uh, previous pack, so I can see that out. Pyroceratops. All right, let's see here. Get down to our easy prey. Destroy a target creature with converted monocost to less. Uh, Roll some or clue. Mutate. He is a. Uh, Two, three, or three, for three. Whenever this creature mutates, put two plus one plus one counter on. Just ridiculous. Escape protocol. And another Slither Wisp. So that was it for now. Please join me at a later date. Uh, I do plan on releasing more booster box openings. Uh, we'll see if we can break it up to get more videos out there. Thanks for joining me. Please like and subscribe. If you feel inclined to join the Patreon network, you will get a shout out after every single video, as well as you'll get to choose what I do in the video when you purchase a certain tier. Now, if you purchase the lowest tier, you're going to get to choose which pack to open. Uh, I will go out and get those packs, or you can send them to me. I don't mind either way. Uh, but if you, if you purchase the higher tiers of the Patreon, I will actually send you out all the cards that I open in these videos. So, feel free, join Patreon, like and subscribe, comment down below, and thank you very much for watching.